Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna share with you my data science advice for graduates and interns in the UK. I will try and answer all the questions and all the interrogations that you might have starting your journey in data science, data analysis, data engineering, and knowing that with the AI these days we can hear a lot of things about what's going on in the job market, but I'm here to try just to demystify what's going on and give you just some tips that worked for me and also tell you the things that didn't work so you try and avoid them as well. If this sounds good to you, let's dive into it. Number one is don't wait until you graduate to upskill and work on projects. When I was in university and I studied computer science, I was in a classroom where 99% of students didn't do any side projects. They used to just go to university, go to the classes, and then go home, do some basic assignments. And they thought when they graduate that things will magically change and that opportunities will come their way and that they will be very skilled. But that's completely not true. If you don't upskill right now, then you won't have the skills later on. It's just the way it is, whether you're in university or whether you graduated, whether you're junior, senior, in order for you to get to that thing, you need to upskill first. That's something you cannot escape. So please, don't wait until you graduate and make the same mistakes as so many people that come to me make. You can start upskilling today, take on projects today, and that's something I will cover deeper in this video. Point number two is do everything you can to land your first data job. Why is it the case? The first job is usually one of the trickiest one because you don't have experience and you need to showcase that you can still solve problematics and you're still worth that paycheck. And the thing is, when you're still in uni or you just finished, it's a bit tricky. You have zero experience. Unless you did some internships and that's really good, you can leverage them. But if you didn't, the goal is for you to upskill the right way. So my advice here is to avoid tutorial hell. We've all been there. We've been watching lots of tutorials, doing zero hands-on or roughly a few things here and there. And we think that we understand the concept, but that's far from reality. Instead of being trapped in tutorial hell, start to take action, work on projects. Then do hands-on, hands-on, hands-on. Hands-on is so important. The way I see it is pick one industry or one hobby that you have and go and find a data set on it. Let's say I do like football. Pick one data set. Go and ask some interesting questions that will drive your analysis. What are the things that you can answer via your analysis? Go and do it. Even small projects, small niche projects where you can showcase how good you are at doing certain things is better than doing the same old 10 data sets about Titanic and iris flowers and all those things that everyone did already. It doesn't help you stand out. And finally, to conclude this point, showcase these projects online. Share them on LinkedIn, share them on YouTube, share them on Medium, share them with people around you, create a website and put them in there, put them on GitHub. There are so many ways to showcase your work because if you don't showcase it, it will go unnoticed and no one will ever see it. So that's a very, very important point that many students, graduates, interns, they neglect. Number three is leverage LinkedIn ASAP as soon as possible. A lot of people neglect LinkedIn. They think it's too professional, it's too boring, but when they need a job, they magically start to go on LinkedIn and start to connect with people randomly and asking them for internships. I have people coming to me on LinkedIn every day asking me for internships. I am not a recruiter and that's not the way you do it. The minimum you can do is to have a clean profile where we can clearly see what you do, what you studied, what projects you've done, and maybe even be a little bit active. Share some content about what you've learned, about the things that you've solved, and then start reaching out to people. You can't just go blindly without even a profile picture and start sharing hundreds of messages and thinking that things will work out for you. If it did, please just share in the comment with me because I've never seen anyone that did it this way and it worked for them. So be a little bit more mindful on LinkedIn. Think of it as an investment. The more you put in and the more you can get from it. But if you don't put in anything, and I mean just sending random messages to random people and recruiters, that's barely doing anything. What you can do, optimize your profile, share some content, connect genuinely with people, keep doing it every day, every other day, and you'll see results over time. Number four is stop wasting your time on certifications unless it's required by the company you work for. 
why am I saying this? We've all been there. I have lots of friends and I've been there myself that we've been chasing certifications like a badge of honor. Like I have three AWS certifications, I have three GCP certifications, but nowadays to be completely transparent with you, they don't serve much purpose. Yes, it's good to have them, but if your plan for the next six months is to only do three certifications, then you're missing the point. Unless your employer asks you to upskill in a certain thing, and then you can do that certification just to showcase that you've learned or you have the skill right now. But you deciding to go do one GCP certification, one AWS certification, one data science IBM certification, just for the sake of having all of them, for no reason and you will not even be using those technologies what's the point it's a big waste of time go do projects and if those projects require from you to use aws then go and learn it you know there's no need to spend a lot of time reading papers and theory to pass the aws certifications and never use it afterwards so i've been there i've been trapped into tutorial hell certifications hell but honestly no one has ever asked me if i had one of those certifications and that's just the reality so the best way for you to build a portfolio in my opinion is to do projects how can you do them to summarize you pick one industry or one topic you're interested in go find a data set if it's already on the internet choose it if not go and scrape that data there are many tools that you can use there are scrapey, beautiful soup. Even pandas has the pandas underscore HTML where you can go and bring some tables from websites. I've done a few tutorials so you can go and watch them and just start working with it. Go clean the data, explore, analyze, visualize, write a machine learning model, try to push it into production. That's a little bit ahead, but just slowly, just pick up the pace. Start showcase on the internet then do another project showcase on the internet if you find yourself only going to youtube and watching a video someone doing the thing and then you just take their code copy paste it and it works and you think you've done the job you're far from it because this way you will never learn you will understand what's going on which is great but in order for you to learn and upscale and hopefully get a lot of opportunities along the way you have to get your hands dirty you can't skip that so this is how you do it. Pick a project, work on it, showcase it, keep going. If you can stay in one industry because you want to go to finance or you want to go to architecture, whatever, it's great because it will show to recruiters that you are interested in that industry and it will give you an edge over other people. If you're interested in a football data analytics project, I've made one. I can just share it here with you or in the description below. I followed my passion. I picked the projects that I wanted. I analyzed it. I shared it on the internet. I just showed you how I did it. You can just have some inspiration and then go find your own and do the same. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe to the channel, give it a like. If there are any topics you want me to cover, leave them in the comment section and I'll just share the football analytics video just here.